Praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you today on this Easter morning. Uh, we're just happy that we know that Jesus uh, died, was crucified, uh, rose again, and lives today. And we're here to celebrate that on this Easter morning. Uh, for our worship service, we still uh, recording outside the church, and we're here at the home making things as uh, good as we can make them for the Lord because we owe everything to Him. He's our all in all. We dedicate the program to all the regulars, all that listen, all three churches. Pray that you'll be blessed. We're going to start with just a little course here, uh, celebrating. We usually sing this at our church, and I'll just sing it here. You sing it with me if you know the course. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Well, the old rugged cross made the difference. Of the crucifixion, and he gave it out on Sunday a lot of 
Easter morning and just said, breaking news, he's risen. Well, it's still breaking news. A lot of folks don't know. Song said, I'm glad I know who Jesus is. A lot of folks still don't know who he is. I'm glad I know him in the full pardon of my sin. I'm glad I know that I'm saved and on my way to heaven, and it feels good. Amen. It's good to be with you today. Thank you for being with us. It seemed different this morning on this Easter morning. Uh, first time in 40 years that I have been, not been to a sunrise service, but I was up early praising the Lord, thanking him for this day, and I'm glad that uh, you're with us today. I want you to worship with us. We'll make announcements and prayer requests at the very end. We're just going to go on with the service and, and praise him for a little bit. But let Brother Donnie come around and sing for us at this time. Worship with him as he sings. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing with him. You know the old song. Amen. Appreciate you being with us today, and uh, appreciate you being on board on board for this Easter Sunday morning. Amen. I, I just thank God for it. You know, it just seems so different from the norm. I went over to my church just a little while ago to pick up my guitar. Maybe might uh, use it a little later on today in another service or something. But uh, I just went over to get it, and uh, I told Sister Chambers I got back. I didn't. Uh, maybe one way I didn't pass the car, maybe coming the other way I, I might have passed one car. It just didn't seem like it was right. I passed two churches before I got mine. Mine was the only car at my church. 
uh, church right before I get to mine. There was two cars there, and uh, the bigger church, there was uh, maybe seven or eight cars, but they were all parked around at the kitchen. I don't know if they were having some kind of special service. They weren't really parked at the church. They were parked at the fellowship building, maybe having something out there. Uh, but it just seems sad, you know. I used to, uh, every Sunday morning on Easter, getting up early, uh, Brother Jimmy either waking me up or me waking him up, because he always got together with us, and the cross was normally decorated, the sign was changed, and, uh, you know, maybe we were a little slack in doing that this year, but uh, we still worship the Lord in our heart. It just seemed different. It just seemed different. You know, I couldn't help but think, about the song that uh, they sing sometimes about the king is coming. Uh, marketplace is empty, no more traffic in the street. And I thought, my, if this ain't similar to that. And then I had another thought. I thought it must be like it was the morning they got up to, to go view the body or whatever they were going to do on Sunday morning. Not sure exactly because Jesus had told them he would rise, but uh, they saw him die and Sometimes it's hard to have the faith that you're supposed to have uh, in, in dire times, and it was a dire time for them. And uh, as Mary went, I, I read that she went, and she went back and got the disciples, and they ran. And uh, Then uh, later on, she was with the other Mary, and I think it was two different events because I think uh, the second time that he appeared was to the women uh, returning from the tomb. The angel appeared and spoke to them, and, uh, told him that he was living. He wasn't among the dead anymore. And uh, you know the stories. And then th th that day, later on, he appeared to where the disciples were at, where 10 of them were at. Uh, Judas wasn't there, and, and uh, Thomas wasn't there. And uh, then he appeared a week later there when they went back for another service, and Judas was there, not trying to, I get you chronologically straight on the events because I'm not so sure I got it all in my mind the way it is. But all I know is that morning when they went there, it must have been a sad day. It must have been a sad day. I couldn't help but feel some sadness when I rode out to the church this morning and, and no traffic, nobody going to church, nobody been to sunrise service. Uh, you know, I guess. I mean, I don't know if somebody might have had one, but the ones that I'm familiar with, no one had one. And it just seemed sad to me, and I had to get over that sadness, and the and, uh, only way I could do that is just thinking about he lives. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, happened uh, since uh, last Easter, and uh, uh, a lot of people in the church went home to be with the Lord, key players, and one of them left before Easter last year, two of them left after Easter, I think, if I got that right. But, uh, you know, we'd miss them sorely if we was at church and I miss them anyway and uh, they're in a better place and uh, they're with the Lord and God did them a huge blessing when he took them away from these things that's here one day he's going to take us away from all the trouble and strife that's in our life and comes our way and we want you just to love the Lord this morning try not to be sad this morning uh, if you're sad because Jesus died I've said it for years uh, along this line I'm so sorry that he had to die, but I'm so glad that he was willing to. I'm glad that he was willing to do it for you, for me, and uh, for us that are saved. And if you're not saved today, you're lost. You know you're not where you need to be with God. I'm getting a lot of people listening to this, and I do appreciate it. Let me just say before I get on into the message here that I appreciate you listening. And uh, uh, the prayer line is available right now by way of texting. If you're listening, just text a prayer request. If you don't want it wrote down, say don't call it on the air, but pray for me, then we'll do that. If you don't say anything, then uh, Brother Donnie or Sister Betty's by the phone and uh, they'll write it down. But it just thrills our heart to know that people listening. I have lost relatives and I've had several of them text and say we're listening. And it just, you know, it, it, one more chance to get the word across. And uh, Donnie was sharing with me last night and I can't remember all the places, but all the places that uh, this ministry has gone since we uh, have started streaming back in November, our services and our TV programs are on Facebook. And if you don't uh, get the announcements, don't stay with us. We got it all on there. Today's newsletter that I'm 
going to be looking at is on uh, Facebook right now. If you want to look at it, you can get a copy and look at, look at it along with us, even the messages on there. Uh, but if you're listening, just take just a minute and say, uh, listen, if you're enjoying the program, it don't take but just a word or two to say enjoying the program, pray for me, or just whatever you'd like for us to do. But if you just got you on there that you're watching, it just makes us feel good to know we're reaching. But I started to say that Donnie told me last night, again, he gets the data and and uh, we got people listening all around. And I don't know if it's uh, missionaries sharing it with other missionaries or how it's getting there, but I, I saw them from Afghanistan. I saw them from Belgium. I saw them from uh, Af Africa, I believe South Africa. I, I saw them from, uh, 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 you know, the UK and uh, just different places, uh, Brazil and Australia, just different places on there just kept popping up that we would reach it, one here, two there. And uh, I said it earlier that I think uh, at 68 years old, God made a way for me to follow the Great Commission and preach the gospel to all the world. And it just seems like uh, it's happening more every day. And I could not be more thrilled, not with me. I know I don't have the perfect voice. I know I don't have the perfect speech. My voice is cracking. And uh, you know, uh, I, I certainly don't have the best person for you to look at. But I'm doing what God called me to do. God called me to preach the gospel, and I, I'm going to do it till I die, some way or another. If it has to be from a hospital bed, one comes by, nurse comes by, doctor comes by, I'm going to do it. I had a chance this week uh, to, to witness to my doctor and tell him that uh, I'm taking a pill that I don't feel like I need, and I was hoping he'd just tell me to, to quit taking it, and uh, I told him that I actually believe that the, when he started me on it, uh, when I had some surgery type thing and I was out of it, and when I woke up, he'd done started me on it. And I hear that you can't just go off of it. But I really believe the weekend before that God healed me. Uh, Brother Tommy prayed for me. There was a lady in uh, revival. I was in revival at Albemarle, and there was a lady, uh, I don't know her name, but she walked up dancing in the spirit and just laid her hands on my chest. And I really feel like God healed me. And I've been meaning and wanting to talk to the doctor about that. And so I got a chance this week, and he said, well, just go down to half a dose. And if you don't have no problem, next week go to a no dose, you know. And, uh, wean yourself off of it. And uh, I told him I felt like God healed him. And he said, sometimes the, the heart heals itself. And I said, well, you know, uh, I, I, that's still God. You know, if he had... If he, had, if he had knowledge that he didn't have nothing to do with it, then it's still God, because James said every good, perfect gift comes from above. But I've just had a chance to witness, and I'm going to do that as long as I live. Uh, you know, an old saying says, y'all testify every time you get a chance, and, and when necessary, use words. Sometimes it's the life you live. It's the testimony that he wants, and, and to let people know because he lives, we can live. Want well, to go to the Word of God. Word of God, John chapter 20, verse 10 through 16. Uh, I'll read it, and if you got it, that's fine. But And I'll try not to uh, look away from you too much, because I want to talk to you this morning as God lays on my heart to talk to you. But in John chapter 20, verse 10 through 16, then the disciples went away again to their home. That was after that Mary had seen the tomb empty, Mary Magdalene, and she had went back. And uh, got them, and they came, and after further investigation, they saw more than she saw, but yet they uh, didn't see him, and they went back to their house. But Mary stood without, verse 11, uh, at the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. That actually, if I understand the scripture, was the first time she looked in. She just saw it was empty, and the stone was gone, and she went back to get them. And uh, she, looking in, saw it, see two angels in white, sitting the one at the head, the other at the foot, where the body of Jesus had lain, not where he was, where he had been. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and she saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? Before she could get through answering the, uh, the angels in white sitting there, 
he began to ask her the same question. Who seekest thou? She supposed him to be the gardener. Saith unto him, Sir, if thou had borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabona, which is to say, Master. Uh, maybe she didn't recognize him uh, as he stood there before her, but when he spoke, she definitely knew who he was. Amen. I, I want to just preach a little short message this morning on the subject, don't give up. It's Easter, amen. Uh, we, we say that it, it may be Friday night, but Sunday's coming. Well, Sunday's here. It's Easter, amen. And you ought to just rejoice to know that he lives. Uh, not the best times that I've ever lived in. Good times in some ways. I got my help today. Thank God for it. Have my wife with me. And have uh, Brother Donnie from the uh, church uh, faithfully come in and help us do these programs. And thank God for keeping him and Betty and myself well. Where we can continue to do this. And, and uh, just believe God that God's going to keep things going as long as we need him to. And know uh, that he will. And ever how long it is. I hope that next week we'll be back in church. I hope the next week we'll be back. Sooner the better for me. I can't wait to get back. I believe it's going to be stronger and better than it ever was. Because I believe the people that show up the first Sunday that we're allowed to have church will be the people that really want to be there unless they're hindered by work or something because uh, you don't have nowhere else to go. Amen. And when you get uh, a release to come back to the house of God, you ought to run to the house of God. Mm -hmm. If that happens, and I believe it will very soon, and I'm looking forward to that. Amen. And I pray that God will bless this reading of his word today. Even with the problems, I wrote on the newsletter, if you have one, and you want to look at it, even with the problems uh, we face in the world today, Easter is still a wonderful time of the year. Amen. Uh, we can drown our sorrows of life in the hope Easter brings, if we would. If we just say, well, I'm not able to go see my kids or my parents or church members are not able to go to church and you can get sad. You go down the road like I did this morning. Don't encourage you to do that. You don't have to get out. Just uh, stay where you're at. Worship God where you, where, you, where you can. Amen. And we thank God for it. But I think if we'll just let all that subside and, and into the fact that Jesus lives and that's the best thing that we can tell you today is that he lived. We can drown our sorrows in the hope Easter brings. We can see new life and purpose in the things we thought were dead and gone. Two reasons. We can see that physically by spring. I can look out the window here and I can see flowers blooming that a month ago wasn't blooming. It's a good time of the year. Spring brings new life. But the cross and the crucifixion and the resurrection is what I'm talking about today. And uh, one songwriter said, love grew where the blood fell. Amen. And I believe that. I believe that uh, it did, and I believe that we can see new life and person and purpose in the things we thought were dead and gone physically and 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 literally and uh, figuratively, all of that. Mary Magdalene, uh, she, uh, let me, this is a good time. I missed a line. This is a good time for us to realize because he lived, we really can face tomorrow. Mary Magdalene could have went back to her home as the disciples did. But uh, she didn't give up. It was Easter, amen? Uh, whether she had it all in her thoughts, what he said or not, I know they had heard him. I know that when he talked to the disciples, he said, what I tell you now, you don't understand, but you will later. And it was all coming together. Hallelujah. It was all coming together, amen? Praise the Lord. And uh, she stayed at the tomb. Peter and John had seen uh, was enough to inspire her to wait and take another look. They looked and uh, they saw things that she did not see. She looked and saw things they did not see, I think. But the first Easter morning, uh, it, it prevailed her. Uh, what they had seen was enough to get her to take another look. This first Easter morning, because her uh, reason to live uh, became her reason to live as she went back and told the disciples she had seen the Lord. It was her reason to live. That's your reason to live. That's my reason to live. He's alive. Amen. As it did for them, uh, let Jesus and the story of Easter restart our life this morning. I believe it can. I believe it should. I believe it will if you will allow it to. Amen. Maybe you got failures up into Easter. Maybe 
no doubt when the, they were sad when uh, he really was crucified and uh, everything he told them began to happen. I'm sure the disciples that went to sleep couldn't stay awake would watch with him one hour. Uh, wish they could have went back and done that hour over. There's a lot of things in my life I wish I could go back and do over. But he lives right now. And I've asked him today if I got any sin in my life, any wrong in my life, if I shorted anybody, my family members or you or anybody else, that God would help me and please forgive me for any wrongdoings and help me to be in a forgiving spirit to anybody that's done me wrong, Lord. I believe that uh, we live in a day, and I believe we're going to have to just let that resonate in our heart today, that we can't give up. It's Easter. Amen. It may not be the Easter you used to. I may allude to that just in a moment or make some more words or comments about that, but I, I want to tell you that it doesn't matter if it's what was. It, it, you know, I've been living 68 years, and I grew up in a poor family, and, and uh, you know, but we celebrated Easter, and I'm not sure we went to sunrise service when I was a kid. We went to different ones. We went to different services. It very well could have been a sunrise service, but I'm telling you, we were brought up right, and God was good to us. Any of my sisters living know where we came from, know what God brought us from, and how good he's been to us. Uh, but there's so many things right now in life or up in there and, and on hold and a lot of things even like church service have been canceled altogether because of COVID-19. COVID we need uh, today the kind of hope that comes from God through Jesus Christ being raised from the dead on this morning that we call Easter. Somebody hear me today. I believe the absolute best thing I could do for me or you either one today is to point you towards this hope that we have in Jesus. Amen. In John 20, 18, when the Bible records for us the words of Mary Magdalene to the disciples when she says, I have seen the Lord on that first Easter morning, uh, she had found her Lord. I'm telling you, if you've got him today, uh, he's still enough. Amen. If you got him, the old songs we grew up, cut her teeth on, sang for years, you know, uh, he's all that I need. He's more than enough. Uh, you know, uh, I'll take Jesus, first of all, all the songs that we sing. Uh, then if we've really found him, we know that he's Lord. And we know that, uh, like the old song says, that though all hell is sell me, I don't have to be moved. <clears throat> I can keep my eyes on him and the prize that wait. Uh, somehow the chain of events that have surrounded us lately have worked more to our good than we realized. I told my wife we were sharing yesterday, and I told her that thought that I had in my notes to share with you today that the Lord had gave me that uh, more ways than we can imagine this thing has worked our good. God didn't say everything that comes would, would be for good in your life, but he would work everything toward it for the good to those who love God, who are they called according to his purpose. And I think there's a greater a weight of glory behind what's happening that we realize. And I think God has worked more to our good than we realize. <clears throat> uh, I have not seen or heard anybody uh, talk about their new Easter outfit. It's different this year. I've not heard or seen any invitations to an Easter egg hunt. There may have been some, but I, I haven't seen any this year. Uh, the Easter Bunny has canceled all his appointments at the malls. Amen. Uh, and matter of fact, the malls have been canceled. Amen. They're not even in existence as they were. I failed to see my first Easter basket. I don't have little kids anymore. My grandkids are growing up. Uh, but I, I've not seen the first Easter basket this year. But I did hear the vice president say, and quote from the word of God the other day, and it made me uh, rejoice when he said, uh, don't cancel Easter. Amen. Uh, that's kind of what I'm preaching. He said, don't cancel Easter. He said, uh, to all my Christian brothers, let me quote something that he said. This is what the vice president said. He said, he said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in the midst. Well, we got three here this morning, Brother Donnie, Sister Chambers, and myself, uh, streaming live this sermon. And you out there, listen to us. You can agree with us today. We can rejoice though everything's going uh, wrong and going bad, I can rejoice. There's a song they play on Joy FM a lot. I can rejoice. Amen. That's my choice. I can 
rejoice. And the word says rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Amen. He wants us to rejoice this morning. Uh, uh, he did say don't cancel any plan, uh, Easter plan. Uh, celebrate Easter. Don't cancel your plan. I mean, you have to cancel going to here, going to dinner and family gathering. Since if we're going to abide by the mandates, we're not supposed to have groups of no bigger than 10. Most of us have a bigger family than that. If we get them all together, we'll have more than 10. And uh, I saw the news this morning where a lady turned 99 and uh, her family was out in the parking lot with birthday cards and waving at her. She was in the window, couldn't get out. And I thought how sad it is, 99 years old, lived 99 years and can't celebrate your birthday, but that's all right. You can celebrate in the Lord. Uh, there's a song, Brother Tim, from our church, my son-in-law sings, celebrate, celebrate. That's what we got to do. And that, if, we, if he was here, if things were normal, we might even sing that song, celebrate, celebrate. Uh, we're not here to talk about the veterans. We're not here to talk about the uh, mothers or the dads and all that have Sundays that we do that. Nothing wrong with that. But we're here this morning to celebrate Jesus. Amen. And I'm so glad that we can. While we may think this is the worst Easter we've ever had or ever seen, uh, you know, and like Peter and John, we may just go on back to our house and, and say, well, ain't well, nothing happened today. This is just a, 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 a you know, I, I feel bad even saying that, but there may be somebody saying this is just a dud Easter. There ain't no fireworks behind this. There ain't no excitement behind this. But if you feel what I feel right now, then you got all the fireworks you need. If you feel right, what I feel right now, you got all the joy you need to know that he lives. Amen. And I believe he does. If I, but if God could just find some marriage today with the three of us that's here, or you that's listening, wherever you're listening from, if he could just find some marriage today that would not go home until they'd seen the Lord, that would not go home until they'd felt the presence of God, uh, no telling what he could do for us. In John 21 through 22, we see how quickly Mary assessed the situation and found Jesus missing. It don't take you long to look around and say church is not like it used to be, not just because of, of COVID-19, but if you can back up to last Easter, church ain't like it was when I was a boy. It's changed, amen. And you could uh, uh, you could assess real quick that uh, it has changed, you know, that Jesus, for the most part, is missing in a lot of uh, gatherings. And I'm not judging them. I just know what I feel in my soul. And I know that I see other people that it seems to be more about them, more about the church, more about the people than it is about God. Everything he did uh, was for us and about us. But everything we do should exalt him. All praises should be given to him. Amen. And uh, she did this. And a quick assessment of this world would allow you to see as she did. A world without God. Uh, there are people that know the Lord. Uh, you know, I, I got an old statistic. I'm sure it's updated now. Uh, but, uh, you know, while people are dying in mass numbers with the COVID virus, uh, I'm, t I'm telling you, uh, people go home every day. Donnie's saying last week, I believe, a whole lot of people going home, and they are a whole lot of people going home. But I've seen a statistic that was uh, had some truth in it. I just can't believe uh, that it probably is not worse now than it was then. don't know how old it was when I saw it, but it was a written statistic that said 150,000 people die in the world every day of the year. You know, people are born, but 150,000 people die every 24 hours. And when you think about that, uh, you know, if you think about what Jesus said, uh, broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life. <clears throat> I think he would want us to understand that the majority of those 150,000 people that die every day uh, go to hell. The majority of them, I don't have no way of knowing that. There may be a day when all the Christians die. Maybe a day, but I'm just saying uh, per population, if 150,000 people die plus now, I'm sure uh, that, uh, you know, if it was half and half, you know, 75,000 people go to hell every day. Uh, God doesn't want you to go to hell. Jesus died that you don't have to go to hell. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, with no reason to smile, we could give up or we can celebrate Jesus this morning. 
uh, being risen and seated at the right hand of God as the Bible says that he is. I want to tell you, like Isaiah said, uh, he is still the Lord who has borne our grief. He is still the Lord who has carried our sorrow. Who, he is still the Lord who was wounded by transgression. He is still the Lord who was bruised for our iniquity. He is still the Lord that the chastisement of our peace was on him. He carried that. He is still the Lord that with his strife we are healed today. And I thank God for we can't give up, must not give up, don't give up. Hold on just a little bit longer. I'm telling you, it's not over, but I preached when this thing started that we're somewhere between when he started uh, telling how that things would happen in the last days that I believe started when Jesus was talking to the disciples on the mountain. There'll be wars and rumors of wars and, and uh, you know, pestilence and different things that would happen. And he stopped and said, but the end is not yet. I think that's where we are today. We're in that segment proceeding toward the quicker couple verses there. And then he says, uh, you know, the word will be preached. And I, I'm telling you, I'm amazed that I'm able to preach the word. I've never been on the mission field and never felt that that's what God wanted me to do. I'm a pastor first and I take care of the flock and that's what God called me to do. I do evangelize some, I do preach other places when I get an opportunity, when I'm at. But I'm here to tell you today that, that I've never felt the call of, of, of the mission field on me. I've supported, I've supported those that do. We got good ones, Brother Morgan, uh, that is nearing uh, retirement and, and letting his daughter and son-in-law, Steve and Frida Bishop, take that ministry over, Faith in God Ministries. And they're still doing a great work. And I thank God for people that do that, people that will separate themselves from this homeland, go to the Bishopville. But I'm telling you, God has never used me to do that. But I believe in this day that he's helping us to get the word out. Maybe uh, the, the few people that I had in my church wasn't enough. And God made a plan or fixed it where I could reach more. Some four or 500 people a week listen to this. Some of them don't listen to the whole thing. But if they listen to one word, one song, uh, one word of a song, then they've heard the word penetrate their hearts. If it don't, that it penetrated their ears. And if it don't penetrate their heart, uh, that's up to them. God's trying to do that to every one of us. We can't give up. Peter and John did not go home empty-handed, but they could have went home uh, satisfied as Mary did. They went home knowing that, that, that the grave couldn't hold him. And I'm sure that as they went home, they probably put it together. Uh, you know, when she went back and said they'd seen the Lord, I, I'm sure that maybe she, they put it together that he did tell us he was going to rise. And we saw it empty. We saw the linen cloths. We saw uh, the things laying there. But we didn't see him. The tomb was empty. And uh, they could have easily believed that they'd stole him as they tried to get him uh, to make them believe that some of the people stole him out of there and uh, he didn't arise, but I'm telling you, the world today don't want to know that meaning that he did arise, but he did. Hallelujah. Peter, therefore, uh, went forth. Uh, the Bible said they didn't go home empty-handed. You know the scripture I read. it. I won't take the time to read it again. But uh, Peter went forth, and the other disciple, John, outrun him, and he came to the sepulcher first. If I understand right, he was actually the first one that looked in, and he stooping down and looking in, saw linen clothes lying, yet he went not in. And John saw where he had been, but he did not go in. Then Peter went in. Then come a sign of Peter, and following him, went into the sepulcher and see if the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, uh, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Uh, you know, there's a story that goes with that. That if it just been thrown over there in the days of Jesus and in the Jewish times that, that they, when they were eating somewhere, if they got up from their table, they folded their napkin. When they was through, they just threw it down. Uh, you know, the folded napkin, uh, napkin implied that they weren't through. They were coming back. Well, I think he sent us a, 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 a message here that he's not through with us. He's coming back again, and I'm looking for the day when he comes back again. But that's what he saw, amen. He saw it uh, folded in, in a place or wrapped together in a place by itself. Then John 
uh, said, maybe I need to take a second look. So he went back and looked again, verse 8. Then he went in also, that other disciple which came first to the cup of supper, and he saw and believed uh, both, but they both stopped short of the risen Lord. If they had just stayed there and said, I'm going to wait, wait right here until he comes, you know, I believe they, he, they could have saw him just like Mary did. I believe that Mary, uh, you know, the Bible talks about how he cast the devils out of her and how wicked she was. And, and uh, you know, uh, she could certainly sing that song that Marcia sang. I got so much to thank him for. But she don't have no more thank him for than I do because I was lost and undone. And he saved my soul. Amen. Praise the Lord. But as uh, they yet, the Bible says in verse 9, as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Amen. I believe they knew it because Jesus had told them that he would. Maybe he talked in uh, uh, realms that they didn't get, you know, tear this temple down, three days I'll build it back. But he'd give them all the word they needed to believe this. What Jesus told them, uh, they would understand later. They still didn't understand. Amen. He had told them, you don't understand it right now, but you still will later. And evidently they still didn't grasp it like they should have. They went home. Amen. Look, let's look at Mary one more time. The Bible said, but Mary stood without the sepulcher weeping as she wept. She stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. See two angels in white sitting, one at the head, the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they take away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she said this, or when she had thus said, she turned herself back. And saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why weepest thou? Who seekest thou? She supposed him to be the gardener. Says unto him, Sir, if you've borne him hence, tell me where they've laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned herself and says unto him, Ramona, which is to say, Master. Sometimes you don't have to say a whole lot to us, just speak peace to her soul, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's all he has to do, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today that that's all he has to do in your life is just speak peace to your soul today. I skipped some of the notes there, but that's all right. I'm talking out Mark to you. If you don't know the Lord today, call on him as your Lord and Savior. Call on him as Lord of your life right now. I feel like there's some people backslid, some people lost, and I don't know if we're getting any calls much or not, but if we are, we'll pray over the ones that's come in. I've been preaching. I haven't been looking at that, but if you haven't called your request in, you can do it right now. If you're lost, you can text right now. I'm lost. Pray for me. I'm praying. They'll bring it over here right now and know that somebody's praying right now to be saved. If you want to be saved, you want your relationship back with God, if you want to give me a name, that's fine. I can pray for you by name. But if you don't, just do whatever you want to do. But call on him right now. Call him. The Bible said, Whosoever, Romans 10 said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's all because of a resurrected Christ. Don't cancel Easter. Have Easter all day long and let him live. And don't let it end at midnight. Uh, in the morning when you get up, he'll still be God. Satan will still be defeated. Hallelujah. And you'll still be on your way to heaven. As I get ready to close this out, or as I close this out, uh, don't leave us unless you have to. We'll come back and make prayer requests further that we got. Take more time with that. And also uh, uh, doing uh, uh, the request that's come in to let you know that well, what we've heard from today and uh, uh, the request that we've had. We've got several that's come in. We've got several from our church, we'll make those requests. Some of them from our church that have been calling in, we've got them on here, so we'll just make those in just a minute. Uh, but we want to pray for you right now and close this out. And we want to tell you that if you're lost, please come to Jesus right now. If you're sick, raise your hand right now. Right now. Raise your hand right now and say, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Father, I love you right now. I'm going to pray. We'll end this worship, this preaching today with this prayer. Father, we love you right now. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. God, I praise your name today.
give you all the praise for the blessings that you've given me, Lord. The victory that I feel in my soul right now, Lord, to know that you're real. I ask you to save somebody right now. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Lord, for doing this work. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We love you today. Thank you for being here. We'd like to say that, you know, we are just uh, streaming our services live right here from this desk three times a week. You know, God does something different. Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, so be back with us for all them. Tell your friends, people that don't go to church, so we're telling them, you know, where they can go to church, you can be on Facebook. And we're there uh, with us locked in. And within a minute or two, we've been doing it right on time, last three or four services. When the clock says 11 o'clock, we come on. 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Uh, we've had a lot of people listening, had uh, several viewers several local viewers, viewers listening, let us know the list and praise God. Had a viewer from Indiana uh, listening, had a viewer from the UK listening, had Elaine Finnegan from England asked for prayer. Her dad passed away last week. This is the lady that we prayed for one night when they were coming to get her in an ambulance and she got better and uh, now her dad's passed away. Never have a chance to pray with nobody in England. If God had opened this door for us, and I thank God. Pray for Elaine Finnegan. If you're still listening, sister, I believe God to touch you. And uh, I hope your dad was right with the Lord if he is, and he's in a better land. And, uh, you know, you can go see him again if he's in heaven. And uh, we can all go see Jesus for the first time. Well, someone that we met a long time ago, we can see him someday for the first time. That's why I won't be no quicker men. We'll sit there a while. We're praying for Robbie Johnson. Uh, uh, I've heard that he's sick. This is Betty's cousin's son. Uh, uh, Sister Joyce from our Mooresbury Church. Her brother Poole, this is uh, Joyce's nephew. Her brother's son. And I understand he's sick. I saw him a few days, a few days ago. Didn't talk to him. But I understand he's got sick and in the hospital. I don't know what's going on. But pray for Robbie Johnson. Pray for all these others that we got. Got so many in our church. Won't mention them all. But pray for all the elderly and the shut in. Got some that's been sick. Kind of revised this a little bit. Pray for Shirley Wilson, her family, Nettie Tig, her boys, her daughter, her grandsons, her grandboys, her grandsons, and her daughter. God touch Debbie Brooks and her family, <coughs> Betty Chambers and her family, uh, Colleen Woody. And uh, all those with her, Betty, and her, uh, her daughters that are there with her, the children that are there. God just touched them all, Dee Dee Woody, and, and uh, uh, her daughter, uh, Debbie, and her husband, Vernon, and any of their kids, her grandkids are there, touch them, touch Kay Eason, Jimmy's wife, uh, and, uh, her son, her grandkids. You know, that God will just touch them all this special time of the year long with Sister Chambers, a tough time for them. Uh, Jimmy was such a key part of Easter. Pray for Cat Wilson and Roy. Pray for Annie Hambride. Some of these have been sick. Several of them told me they get better, but we still got their name on there. Brother Jeff called last week. Please pray for Linda Randall and for Jeff from Memorial Church. Uh, pray for Logan Fletcher from our church. Been on chemo and starting Monday, they're going to add to that chemo radiation. I understand he's going to still do both, so please pray for him. Pray for A.C. Wells, White Oak Manor, uh, VA Hospital in Charlotte. Pray for Wayne Coda. Uh, last week, I think I told you, he went back to the hospital with his heart speeding and uh, racing. And uh, this week, he's come back home, but I understand he has been diagnosed with a regular heartbeat in about six weeks. The doctor's going to go back and shock his heart. heart. I know God could heal him before that, and that not to be done. But either way, pray for him that God will work it out. Uh, pray for Steve Fuel, uh, sick with diabetes and uh, uh, kidney 
failure and on dialysis and things that he deals with, not talking, not talking down, not negative. That's what he's dealing with. And this week he had some tests, an ultrasound, different things. He goes back to the wound doctor. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll hear from them this week. We're praying for him. Please pray. Uh, pray for Louise Grant, my sister. She fell recently. My sister Betty been sick. Charles Shook, my brother-in-law, is taking radiation for uh, or chemo. I might have, I believe, radiation. I think that's right. Uh, for for his cancer, pray for him. Uh, remember to pray for all the prayer line requests that have been many this week. Pray for our church, our nation, God's protection over his people during uh, COVID-19. Uh, let's remember all the bereaved families. I think I skipped a line. I don't remember. Maybe I did. Uh, you know, remember Charles Clark and Lois. Remember the Parkers from Charlotte and Sister Rhonda. I might have mentioned them, but I think I skip through and left some, but pray for all of these that God will touch. If we just pray, don't forget to listen to us uh, on the program. Don't forget to listen to us uh, on TV. We're still uh, taping that. We do thank you, all of you, that sent you tithes and offerings in. That's what keeps the, the church going, uh, the bills paid, and uh, we thank you for it. It ain't as much as it used to be because we don't have as much expense. We have some different expense other ways, but it's all right. God's taking care of it. Appreciate you, uh, most everybody from our church. <clears throat> I don't look at the tithes and offerings. That's just a personal thing because I, I don't want to ever make no difference. Somebody pays tithes, somebody don't. But I think most of our people pay tithes, and most of them that pay tithes, we've heard from. Either Tommy's told me they called him, or uh, they sent him to the church, or they sent him to me, and I promise you, every bit of it gets to the church. And God's took care of the church. Been some extra offerings given. We won't call your name, but we do appreciate it. And sometimes people hand it to me, and I just take it. If you give me a love gift, and I forgot to say thank you, and you're here listening to me now, I thank you. And when I get a chance, I'll thank you to your face if I forgot. God, God help me not to forget. That's very important. Thank you for sending in money to the TV program. Uh, we're still on. It still costs money to do that. And hopefully soon and very soon we'll be back to doing it live. But as of right now, we're still taping this broadcast. And the things will change. It'll get better. We'll go home and be with the Lord and let it really get better. We're going to keep on working till he comes. Pray for you right now. Sick, lost, hurting, discouraged, financially, uh, in despair, whatever you need, bills to be paid you can't pay, cast it all on him. Casting all your cares on him, 1 Peter 5 and 7, because he cares for you. Father, I love you right now. I thank you, Lord, for it all. And I give you all the praise in Jesus' name. We love you. We thank you, Lord. We magnify you today. In Jesus' name. We love you. We give you the praise. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. And amen. And amen. God bless you. Be back tonight. Six o'clock. Only been going for about 53 minutes. And so we try to redeem the time, get as much into it as we can. Thank you for listening. If you tuned in late, you can go back and listen to it. It'll be on the Facebook uh, show that was an hour ago live or whatever. But you can watch any of them. We've been on. God bless you. Keep praying for us. For the TV program, write to us. Keep texting us on here. Keep making your posts. We're hearing from you and we're praying for you. When we do, God bless you is our prayer. Until tonight, goodbye, everybody. Happy Easter.